So the second chat was about a, a three position servo, which is not to be confused with the previous discussion we had, which was on a three way point. So let's just have a look. So we've got a three way position servo. What does that mean? Why would you want to do this in the first place? Now, the obvious one would be for animation purposes, if you've got something that would be in three positions, as opposed to the normal servo, which either moves the point one way or the other, or it moves a servo semaphore arm one way or the other, but accustomed to two positions. But we might have situations where we want to have a servo that will go to three different uh, rotations. I say one would be the animations, but other ones on model railways could be, for example, there are some signal arms that adopt three positions, which you couldn't do with a normal servo. as you see there. There's also, apart from three-way semaphore arms, there are three-way points. That's the one we looked at previously, which is a, a Pico three turnout point, but it uses, as we discussed previously, two sets of point blades to get you there. So we needed two servos in order to move the two sets of blades. We're not looking at that. We're looking more at this kind of situation here. You can probably see one track coming in, three tracks coming out, but only one set of blades. If you look a bit closer, it becomes a bit clearer there. We can see three outgoing tracks, but only one incoming. So there's only one set of blades here that are going to move to either that position, that position, or that position. You can see it there. There's only one tie bar that's going to move. There again, similar one tie bar to three output rails. And there's a model railway implementation of it. So we've only got one tie bar, we we'll have to move it to three different positions. Another one here, you can buy from Faller a servo operated wagon turntable with multiple positions. So how are we going to achieve this? Well, there's two things, hardware and software. The hardware is the easy part. It's already available. That's the easy points kit with a PCB. There's also, a, as you know, the original strip board version. There's a strip board version. You've got one input to trigger it. And you've got two different endpoints. There's your two positions. And the third trimmer is used to work out the speed. So with no modification whatsoever to the PCB or the strip board, we can repurpose the easy points kit. So instead of having two endpoints and a speed, we have three different positions. Okay, we have to sacrifice a single preset speed, but we now can use the exact same hardware with no modification whatsoever, apart from the program itself that's on the chip. Like that. The only thing we've changed is instead of having one input, we've got two inputs. As you can see, the red arrows reminding us that the two pins here are held high normally at five volts by these pull-up resistors. 
and we're using a switch here that's a changeover switch in center off. So in comes the zero volts here. And if you throw the switch one way, you make that one go low. If it's in the middle, then they're both going to be high. Throw the switch the other way, and you bring that input low. So using one switch, we can have three positions, and that means three positions for the servo. That's it, just shown as a table. If the switch is in the up position, one is high and one is low. If it's in the middle position, then of course both are high from the pull-ups. And the other position it's low and high. So we can now change the code to know what's coming in on those two input wires here, and then set the servo accordingly. So it's not really a hardware issue, but this changing the switch from a, a single pole to a changeover center off. And the board and the PCB remain exactly the same. So it's the software we need to change. So how are we going to do that? Well, nothing has changed there either, except we've now made two inputs instead of one. Still got the three original trimmers, except now instead of this one being called uh, speed, it's now the mid position. So three trimmers come in for the three different rotation settings, two inputs that decide which of the three is going to be read and used to move the servo. Again, usual stuff in programming, we decide that the trimmers all have to be inputs as have the two switch positions and one output going to the servo. Nothing different there. We set ourselves various variables to use during the program. We know that the way the servo works is you have a pulse that repeats every 20 milliseconds and that pulse width determines the rotation. Anything between traditionally one millisecond to two milliseconds. The amount of rotation depends on the, the pulse width that you send. That's traditional servo stuff. So now we know that. The main loop is very similar. Get a valid change. You're waiting until somebody throws a switch, or it could be an input from EasyBus or something else, CBus or whatever, or some other logic. But in this case, we're using a switch. So you wait until you get a valid change, and then you read the appropriate trimmer. So you're going to read either trimmer one or trimmer two or trimmer three, depending on which way you've thrown the switch. And then move the servo to that appropriate position. Simple as that. Wait for a switch change, read the appropriate trimmer, and then move the servo to that position. Like I said, there's the, the logic for it, for the highs and lows. It's the same code that we use in, in the, the, the easy points. We wait to see if something's changed, but we do it, we take 40 readings, 40 very short readings to see whether it was a real change or just some pulse of interference. And if you emerge at the end with nothing changed, you know it's a genuine change of state and we can use it. So that's what happens if input one goes low, we check 40 times, is it still low the whole 40 times? And if it is, everything's okay. We can read that particular trimmer. So we're going to repeat that code three times de depending on what we have. And then we read the appropriate trimmer. If you've chosen the that the input is one, read AN1. If it's two, read AN2. If it's three, read AN3. We're going to get a value back that will vary between nothing and 255. 
which is too much for the, the pulse width. So we divide it by two. So we're now getting somewhere between one and, and one, two, seven. If I made that one millisecond, as you saw there, it's going to be between zero and one, two, seven, which means we can have the full swing of the, of the servo. If we want to, we can change the servo speed, but not with a trimmer. You can have a, a fixed speed of your choice. So norm, normally for points and so on, you want a slow speed. And if it's if it's going to be an animation, you might want something faster. You just change that value there. And it'll slowly move between one setting and the other. And finally, just to prove it, let's just run the video. And here is the version where the steps are incremental in the code. One position. Second position, first position. <laughs> 